Like many, I took the opportunity to watch Michael Lewis's CBS 60 Minute interview recently to see what evidence Michael Lewis had come up with to back up his claim that securities markets are rigged and that high frequency trading is to blame. Underwhelmed would be an understatement. By the end of the interview, it was clear to me that everyone on that program was selling something. Michael Lewis, his book, Brad Katsuyama, his new exchange, and CBS, quite clearly, airtime. One needs to be very careful of people who are talking public interest while selling you something. Michael Lewis's central tenant was that something as complicated as HFT, which defies explanation and investigation, must be bad. No evidence was, pro was provided of this other than because computers work faster than humans, no one is in a position to work out just what they are doing. This is complete nonsense. Alongside trading systems, we have been building surveillance systems that work off the same principles and these systems are capable, given the right information, of looking at orders in sub-microsecond intervals. Aside from this, however, I notice that in the same breath, Lewis spoke of how Brad Katsuyama apparently figured it all out and is now making money from it with his new business. Indeed, the explanation portrayed on CBS was so basic that a high school student could have figured it out, that there was latency between markets that were located in significant differences apart. This has been an issue since automation was introduced way back in the late 80s. I well remember a debate in Australia about slowing down orders from the eastern states to allow traders in the western state of Australia to compete. The smart people, Michael Lewis calls them riggers, I prefer to call them innovators, figured out that in these circumstances it made sense to be closer to the location where the execution box was located. Indeed, so many people figured this out that eventually the exchanges themselves commoditized latency by offering co-location centres where everyone was capable of having a box, the same distance from the execution machine. So it's just not true what Michael Lewis says about exchanges being complicit in the whole affair. If anything, it's quite the opposite. They have found a way to make money from reducing disadvantages of latency to their own marketplaces at least. Sure, it costs a bit more money, but the same story explains why individual investors went to mutual funds in the first place, because it costs too much to trade as an individual. Michael Lewis talks about high frequency traders rigging the market. My prize, based on evidence I have collected, is that ill-conceived attempts to impede high frequency trading, which may now result from such fear-mongering will have a severe impact upon liquidity which will in turn raise the cost of trading for investors and the cost of capital for corporates. But you don't just have to believe me. This same conclusion was announced recently by the Australian Securities Commission who had access to much better data than I and were presenting at SEBI's first international conference on HFT. However, before we get too carried away with this debate, as people like the New York Attorney General seems to have, it might be sensible to recall how latency became an issue in, market, in the marketplace in the first place. Governments in the world's major markets insisted on competition in securities markets, which inevitably led to market fragmentation. This in turn led to latency advantages that HFTs have exploited and the development of co-location centres and algorithms such as those run by the Royal Bank of Canada to make it harder to make a buck from a pure HFT play. To me, this is innovation in progress as Brad Katsuyama's own activity evidences. If people are extracting excessive rents from a given situation, others will step in to take a lick out of them. And this is happening such that if all you are into is HFT, good luck with that one trick business model. There is no question in my mind that there are issues with HFT, but CBS, the CBS program got at none of those issues. This was largely because there was very little focus on evidence. To address the questions of whether HFT is good or bad for markets, one needs to take heed of the universal mandate of regulators, namely to ensure that markets are fair and efficient. To address this mandate, one needs as a minimum to define and build operational measures of fairness and efficiency and see how these measures change as new market innovations like HFT are introduced or changed. One also needs to be more clearly identify HFT activity itself, and this can only be done by ensuring that all exchange orders have client identifiers on them something that ASIC in Australia has now regulated from October of this year. With such information, one can then begin to appreciate who are the fastest traders and investigate through targeted audits how their trading behaviour affects fairness and efficiency metrics. One could, as a minimum, identify when such trades are getting faster, which might then start a process of understanding how such trades are getting faster, hopefully not by reducing risk and compliance checks, which is likely one of the most significant issues associated with some particular types of HFT players.